But that goes without saying. That's why I pray for us that we would be a more loving, you know, more generous to each other in all these ways. I want you to calculate how you're going to do that. How you're going to be more loving and, and work it out. But you've got to pray about it. If you're not praying about it, it's a bit like trying to, do, to build a building without seeing an engineer or an architect. It's, it's, it's not going to happen. Let me spe spell this out. When the Holy Spirit comes to live in you, He cleans house. Okay? He, he does. He moves in and goes, Hey, you don't need this anymore. This place is a mess. Let's clean it up. He doesn't do it all at once, though. He starts to put things in order, but he doesn't do it all at once. Now, it would be wonderful if he did. My life would be so much easier for me and also for the discussions I have with other Christians. That would be a lot easier. But he doesn't. We are transformed, gradually changed by the Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 spells this out. We are being transformed into His likeness with ever-increasing glory, ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. It's a gradual process. It finishes the day you die. Sorry about that. Then you get to be perfect. That's pretty cool. Did you get the gradual process of it? How? By His Spirit. We've been looking at the Holy Spirit and what He does. In our lives. And next week we get to talk about gifts. That'll be fun. Um, but let, let me summarize what we've been saying about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. And, and He works in us by changing our minds so that we can understand what God says. And He works in us by changing our behavior so we can be more like Jesus. Okay, and next week, we're going to see how He gives us gifts and abilities that we can use to bring glory to God. Do you have any questions? No one? Oh, gee, thank you! <laughs> yes. Stop. <laughs> Verse 25 of Galatians. Uh, yeah. uh, if we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. What's the difference between being... Lead by the Spirit, guide by the Spirit. Uh, yes. um, do you want the NIV version? Oh, I've, got, I've got a different one as well. So if we live by the Spirit, uh, we must also follow the Spirit. Mm. So, um, walk in the top, walk the top. Walk, yes. Yeah, so, so, how so, you... so I think what I think what Paul is saying is, if we live by the Spirit, i.e. we call ourselves Christians, we've got to do what He says. So, so here he's, he's giving the flip side. The Spirit works in us, right? But, you know, listen to Him and do what He says. Does that make sense? Sarah? When it says that if you do any of these things, you will not inherit the Kingdom of God. Is that... Within the context of if you're not if you're not getting Jesus to defend you and Him as your Lord and Savior, yeah. you won't inherit the kingdom of God. Or is it if you do these things, you won't inherit? No. So the question is, when Paul says things like, "No one who does these things will inherit the kingdom of God," he's talking about the um, it's. The ongoing life of a person should demonstrate which camp they live in. So remember, Jesus says in Matthew 5, 6, uh, by their fruits you will know that he's talking about false teachers. And he's saying that, that their lives will show you where they sit, where, where they, what their belief is. And so if they're if their lives are lives of, you know, life and light and etc., then you know they're they're good teachers. And if their lives are death and you know stealing and whatever, then they're false teachers. 
Uh, and so John has the same idea of walk in the light, you can't walk in the darkness and the light. What fellowship does the light have with the darkness? Um, not meaning that if you sin, you're out of the light, but meaning that if your ongoing lifestyle demonstrates darkness, then, that's, then you, you're not in the light. And Paul is saying, those who do these things, as in, if this is what is most important to you, if this is your life, if you're the sort of person who lives by the flesh, right, and not by the Spirit, then you, you don't have the Spirit. If you live by the flesh, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. He doesn't say, oh, you, uh, you stop, that's it, you're gone. You know, you were uh, promiscuous or you really were jealous or you got angry or you were, you know, gone. What he's saying is that this is, this is that in the context. The yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, that, that's everyone. Everyone's done at least one of these things. Uh, most of us, all. Right? Uh, or, sorry, all of us. Yeah, no. So, what are you saying? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. tired. It's recorded. Yeah, 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 that's right. So, what, what he's saying is that, because um, what he's done here is he's set up the spirit flesh, you know, no, dichotomy. No. And he's saying, you live by the spirit, you don't live by the flesh. If you live by the flesh, then you don't have the spirit. So, oh. Yes, sir. I, um, I'd like to share that um, that I, uh, I, I, I it's, it's only really recently where it's really come home to me. This is a very important thing. Um, we all know a lot of people that not, don't necessarily um, live bad lives. We know a lot of people that aren't Christians. I mean, yeah. we know a lot of people that are, are, are non-Christians. They don't believe. And they do good things in our world, right? They, they um, are, are, you know, care for people, they love each other, they, they raise families, and they, they look after their kids and all of that. And, um, and you say, well, you know, what is that, right? Well, what, a, what sets a Christian aside from that is, is that um, they're doing it from themselves, okay? And they're going to come unstuck. And they have nothing inside them to say, this is really wrong, right? So when you have the Holy Spirit, um, what you're actually doing is you're praying and asking God first, what should I be doing, right? So when you do something for somebody else, or good things and that, it's not actually coming from you, it's coming from God. It, God is your driver, right? It's not coming from you. And you know it. If, you, if you're doing it because you want to impress somebody or for somebody to say, wow, he's great, you know, and all of that, um, then you're not actually listening to God. You're not actually um, being um, led by the Holy Spirit, right? And so, yeah, it's, it's very important that, that that's what sets us apart. Mm. These good things and the way we live our lives comes from God. And... That's the thing you really want for people to see. That's the you know, um, that's the thing that that um, God wants to speak to other people through you and see that you are doing those things because the Holy Spirit is driving you. You know, not coming from you. That's uh, you know, and it's taken a while for me to really catch up with that. Yeah.